Hi, I'm Jack Ford, atop the headquarters of Howry, where 50 is proving to be the new 20. Strong, fit, and just getting started. When Jack Howry was chairman of the Federal Trade Commission, he dreamt of creating the perfect antitrust law firm, one that would bring the same experience and energy to antitrust that he'd seen firms bring to other areas of the law. He wanted a firm that would try cases, be known for the excellence of its lawyers, the thoroughness of their preparation, and their ability to win. That dream was realized some 50 years ago when Jack Howry, together with friends Bill Simon, Hal Baker, and Dave Murchison, opened the firm which bore their names. Clients were drawn to this model of a single practice firm, one they could count on to get their deals through the rough waters of merger approval. It worked then, just as it works now. About that same time, in the mid-50s, Houston, Texas had its own dreamer, Tom Arnold, who saw that intellectual property law held the same promise. Arnold, White, and Durkee, and Howry were on parallel tracks to success. Howry, Simon, Baker, and Murchison, now just Howry, and Arnold, White, and Durkee are celebrating their 50th anniversary. The DC antitrust firm and the IP firm, now combined, have expanded to add a complex business litigation practice. And the Washington and Houston offices now look to colleagues in 12 other offices and nine other time zones. It has been quite a ride. As we celebrate the firm's golden anniversary, a half century of complex, high stakes, and cutting edge legal services, we pause to ask the question, just what is it that keeps Howry so fit at 50? Well, for starters, a healthy dose of leadership. I think we came up with a plan or strategy that, uh, that has worked. Uh, and it was risky. But we took the risk and, and we won. A strong focus. The secret to our success is that we uh, we focus uh, on uh, three fields of law, which are very much uh, uh, working together. So uh, I think the place is in a, in a quite a unique position. A firm grasp on the basics. Well, it's sort of like real estate. It's preparation, preparation, preparation. An unrivaled commitment to diversity. When we look at Howry, and I see it here in the partners meeting we're at, we have a lot of diversity across the partnership already, and it's a group of individuals who happen to be of diverse background. That's the future. And a whole lot of pride. Competitors view us with a sense of fear. Uh, after all, it is the firm that's in court every day, and it has got unbelievable talent and an unbelievable track record, unmatched by any firm out there. As the firm turns 50, we take a closer look at how far it's come and where it's headed. And for that, we turn to those who know Howry best, its people. Looking at, at, at Howry and, and how it's grown over its 50 years, what do you think the real secret to its success is? You have to have very strong management that is focused. Uh, and then I think you have a real dedication to success. Uh, we do like to win, and maybe that's because we're trial lawyers. I don't think there's any one secret. In fact, I don't think it's a secret at all. I think it's rather uh, obvious. And that is, it's a law firm of lawyers who are dedicated to their craft, who take their clients and their matters seriously, and they love to win. Uh, they're lawyers who really believe in trying cases to the hilt, and that's the way the clients see us, and, uh, and it's the way we are in the courts, and that's why we have a lot of business. From D.C. and Northern Virginia to Chicago, Houston, and Salt Lake, across California and overseas to Amsterdam, Brussels, Paris, London, and Taipei, Howry's come a long way since 1956. Why do you think it, it was so essential for Howry to, to grow in the fashion that it's grown over the years? Well, we had to get bigger. I mean, you have to have a bigger footprint, uh, and you have to have talent in, in different geographic areas. Uh, we haven't grown as fast as most firms. Uh, that's what's enabled us to keep a culture and to keep the focus. A lot of firms just go out and acquire and do mergers and get bigger and bigger and bigger for growth's sake. We haven't done that. We've actually, with the exception of maybe two mergers uh, over the last 10 years or so, the firm has really been growing small, growing, uh, buying little groups or bringing in little groups of, of two and three people at a time. And I think that's very important. The clients were becoming more multinational, and it was just logical to extend ourselves, not just across the country, but across the world, uh, to follow where our clients were going, and we'll continue to do that. 
But while the firm's reach extends farther than ever, its focus remains sharp as ever. Why is it so important for Howry to, to focus on these limited areas of practice? You're better at being uh, at the highest levels of your profession in a few areas rather than trying to be uh, marginal or even mediocre by having many, many areas of law. We've really picked, I think very wisely, three areas that complement who we are as lawyers and what we do as a law firm. Um, antitrust, of course, goes way back to the beginning of the law firm. It's high stakes, uh, high intensity, uh, a lot on the line, bet your company type uh, litigation and regulatory work with our mergers and acquisitions. Uh, the litigation component has the same characteristics and now intellectual property is the hot practice area and all three of these are going to continue for the next 50 years without question. Of course, the ability to focus doesn't just apply to legal matters. Over the years, we've caught folks at Howry sharpening their skills in a variety of ways, from what they eat before trial to what they do to stay energized. When I am in pre-trial preparation, my favorite snack is red vines love red licorice. That sugar keeps me going. Uh, I eat anything that's high in grease and saturated fat. Conference room cookies. Drink a lot of orange juice. I always eat two Eggo waffles in the morning and a half a cup of milk. I believe in coffee. Cheeseburger medium rare, a real big one uh, with uh, lettuce, extra Bermuda onion and french fries. On my study diet of Diet Cokes and candy bars and McAllen at night. I'm very uh, fond of Dutch herring. To prepare for trial, I get a lot of sleep beforehand because we don't sleep at all once we get there. I wean myself off of caffeine so that when we get there and I drink the caffeine, it'll keep me awake and go out and buy lots of chocolate. <laughs> the trial prep food is potato chips, but uh, I mean, other than that, I, it's not like I don't wash my socks for a week or something like that. Another aspect of Howry that sets it apart from and above the competition its commitment to diversity. Let's talk about diversity in the firm. Why is that so critical to Howry's success? Talent is not limited by race or religion or national origin. It's simply not. Talent is ubiquitous, and I think if you want to have the most talented law firm in the world, is what we want, uh, you cannot have those barriers. There's not one size fits all for Howry. I mean, that's the good thing about it. There's a lot of diversity. People come from different backgrounds, from different countries, and, uh, and there's a good blend. In order to represent our clients most effectively, they also need uh, diverse counsel. So, I mean, I think that plays well. And I think Howry has done a very good job in terms of promoting that and putting itself out as a firm that takes diversity seriously. On any given day, you may find members of the Howry team here in the gym doing a little basic training. But barbells and treadmills are no match for sweating it out at Howry Boot Camp. Ah yes, Howry Boot Camp. Summer associates don't have to shave their heads for this gig, but they do have to raise the bar. It is trial by fire. Tell me about the, the Howry Boot Camp and, oh. and how that differs from other firms' recruiting methods. In order to train trial lawyers, you have to have people that you think have the potential to be trial lawyers. And the traditional summer programs didn't give us that. They showed whether someone could think and write, maybe. Uh, but we decided we needed to test people to see if we wanted them as part of this firm. And so we developed this program where for two weeks solid, they go from the beginning of a complaint to trying a case and everything in between. And they got on their feet and they do it. A lot of it's training. We have a lot of our lawyers mentoring and coaching and instructing. But in the end, we see them on their feet. We see what they're capable of. But more importantly, they see whether this is what they want to do or not and what they're committing to. And as a result, we've gotten some wonderful people through this process that I think we may not have gotten otherwise. Even by its name, boot camp is different. Um, it, it incorporates a lot of different aspects. It has a traditional um, long lunches and happy hours, but you actually learn something in boot camp, which I think is a little bit of a novel thing. Um, when you're actually attending boot camp, it's very intense, very dynamic, um, but it's, you learn a lot. Howie's ability to attract and retain new talent has been and remains key to its health, prosperity, and longevity. Of course, we need a constant infusion of new talent uh, everywhere in the firm. Uh, we want to continue to hire the very best so that the firm continue to, can continue to be the very best. 
Well, recruiting is the lifeblood of any organization. Um, to continue to serve its clients, Howry is going to have to continue to recruit the best and brightest attorneys. Because if you don't grow, you die. If you don't add new blood or new people um, in new markets or even in same markets, it's, um, you know, it's essential. You know, this is a people business, and the more people that we can add, the more talented people we can add, the more we can become known as a place that has all these special people, then, you know, it's a way of building our competitive advantage and expanding it. So um, you have to do it. If you don't do it, then you do die because I want all the input I can get. And there's no, uh, every trial's different, every case is different. And so the more new, fresh talent and talented people that you have around you, the better the stimulus to, uh, to take on any kind of a challenge. We've done a lot of things with the academies, with How Are You, our virtual university. Uh, we've even started our first podcast uh, and we've won some big awards lately. But I think that's a fabulous thing to tell our associates, look, we're willing to invest in you. We're willing to take this time away from your job. We're willing to have 20 or 30 partners come in to teach you. It sends an enormous signal. And frankly, we're only as good as our training. So if we can develop <laughs> internally high quality lawyers and indeed economists for cap analysis, as well as attracting the best talent from outside of the best character as Bob Ruyak has repeatedly described it, that is the way forward for our success. So what does the future hold for Howry's newer additions? The evidence speaks for itself. How would you describe to somebody the, the personality of, of the Howry firm and, and the personalities within the firm? I think we have a group of really terrific trial lawyers. I think we have a group of incredibly hard-working trial lawyers. And that as a core let's all of us really respect each other. When we celebrate our victories, it's not just the partners and the associates, it's the paralegals, the staff attorneys, the secretaries, you know, the Alex Rennicks of the world that help us in court. Uh, it's a team and, and you cannot function without the links in that team very well. Uh, everyone that I've met, from the lawyers to the corporate people, you know, the folks that are recruiting James Martin and such are just fabulous people. Uh, beginning to end, I cannot tell you, and I have experiences at other large firms, how good the people are here. I think it's an outgoing group of people, a very diverse group of people with diverse backgrounds, um, and they bring that to the work that we do. All that focus and vitality pays off every day in the courtroom. It's where Howry shows its true strength. While most cases get settled, uh, the other side knows that Howry will go to trial. And we do, more than any other firm. Most of these other firms don't want to go to trial. They don't like to go to trial. They've got chairman of litigation departments that haven't been to trial in 15 years. But they know, when they look across that table, they know we want to go to trial. They know we want to be there, and they know we love it, and that's what they fear. We are real litigators. We actually try cases. And I think that's what scares our competition. I think the other thing that scares them is that we have managed to actually be global. Uh, very hard for U.S. firms to do. Very few have done it successfully. When people hear the word Howry, I think they get nervous. Um, because they have such a good track record of, of winning cases. The clients know that when it comes to antitrust, intellectual property, and global litigation, that Howry is a go-to firm. They can, you know, put their, uh, their trust in, in the firm. We sit on the wall for our clients, and that's something that uh, I think is very important and is the key to client success. Remember that those who risk do win. And while we've done a lot, We've achieved a lot. Uh, we have expanded dramatically in many ways. Uh, there's still a lot to do. Uh, the dream isn't completely fulfilled. And I think we ought to continue on that dream, try to continue to bring in the very best, most talented people uh, to preach and live the concepts of uh, excellence, commitment, and collaboration as we have. And to always remember that we have a serious uh, commitment and obligation uh, to those around us, those that uh, can't get justice. 
And I think if you put those things together, uh, then I think this farm will survive for a long time. Words to live by, well into the next half century. I'm Jack Ford, thanks for watching. We leave you now with a special message from and for the fine men and women keeping Howry so fit at 50.